how we shy away to come to take the throne To conquer world powers, bring Jake the home I'm quarterbacking like Jake DeLone Like Mount Rushmore, I gotta face the stone I wanna say call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah And it's all praises to the Heavenly Father In the name of who the world in who calls Jesus Christ In Hebrew is Yahweh Shah, man, all right? As the brother, as the powerful should talk, have just brought out, man. Listen, there's only one name under heaven that men must call upon to be saved. And these are the times to where the righteous man run into his name. Give me Proverbs 18 and 10 real quick. This is the time because, listen, Esau's got to come. Give me Revelation 12 and 12. Esau's got to come down with full wrath, man. Right? I was watching a clip from Joe Biden that he uh, that he had on this, uh, on this video from 2005. And he said that it is his mission. Well, he was asking. He was asking the guy. He said, uh, "He said, is there any kind of way we can uh, uh, give a, a microchip uh, in, in, the, in the hands of, of the population to basically track them?" I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it, man. One of the brothers from another camp had put it up, and, and, and man, hey, we went into it by the spirit, bro. And so we are here, bro. Es uh, Esau's kingdom is finishing, man. And it's been. Give me Daniel. Hold that. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna uh hope where well, you get that hope, give me a Daniel uh, five and twenty-five. Right? Get this. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 10. The name of the Lord and the name of the Lord. Right? The name of it. Go ahead. It's a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and it's safe. The righteous run into it and it is safe. And guess what? And today we know his correct name, man. In Ezekiel 39, verse 7, he says that he's going to make his holy name known. But who is he making known his holy name to? Unto the righteous, unto his chosen men, right? And even within that, there's going to be some people that, that calls upon the name of the Lord, say, Lord, Lord, and they prophesy even in his name, but he's still not going to allow them into the kingdom. Why? Because they've been working deceitfully this whole time. Right. The, the book of Daniel, chapter 5, and verse 25. And this is going to prove right here that Babylon so-called America, it's finished, man. It's finished. Give me First Thessalonians 5, starting from the top. Right? America is finished because the Most High God ruleth in the kingdoms of men. Some of that you Christians are, y'all don't understand. Right? Brother Oz was telling me that, that one of his Christian friends said, you can't mix politics with the Bible. What the hell? All through the Bible, you see, give me Psalms, hold that, give me Psalms 115, verse 16, because all through the Bible, you see where the Most High God rules in the kingdoms of men. He sets up kings and he uh, uh, sets them down, man. Pursuant to Daniel chapter 2 and 21. Right? You got that? No. It's the book of Psalms chapter 115 and verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth had he given to the children of men. But the earth had he given to children of men. Is that it on that? Huh. So the earth he's given to the children of men. What do we do here? Well, we have kingdoms here, right? He created a little, this earth is just a movie. He created a little earth, man, with some little people, 18 nations down here, right? And each one is fulfilling them for the exact lot that he's already predestined for them to do. Now, go ahead and give me Daniel 2 and 21 real quick. Uh, 21, do, do, uh, Daniel 2 and 21. Well, the book of Daniel chapter 2. So you want to the book of Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He changeth the times and the seasons, right? Something that you so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, y'all are ignorant of, right? What do y'all, y'all have a horrible reputation. Uh, y'all have a horrible uh, relationship with time. Y'all niggas are late for everything. So y'all are, are going to be late for understanding what time and season y'all are in right now. Y'all in the time of birth. Listen, you have just now a, give yourselves a round, a round of applause. You have just now voted yourself in Jacob's trouble. Because this this dude, Biden, man, he is ready to uh, issue out the mark of the beast. So congratulations. You have gotten your new slave master, your new pharaoh. And guess what? The Most High God is going to have no pity upon you simple Negroes who believe every single word. Because y'all are foolish and y'all are just simple, man. What I have you hope? Uh, uh, the book of the 2, verse 21. And he changes the time. He changes the times. Give me Ecclesiastes 3, star for the top. And the seasons. And the seasons. He removes kings. He removes kings, right? So it, it was a simple thing for that for that Christian to say, oh, he doesn't uh, deal with politics. You can't mix God and politics. What? <laughs> Go ahead. 
and set it look and set it up kings uh -huh. and he giveth wisdom unto the wise he gives wisdom unto the wise why because when you're wise and when you have wysdom he's going to reveal the deep dark mysteries of the kingdom man right so you're going to understand uh you're going to understand these judgments that's happening right now each and every morning pursuant to uh zephaniah chapter 3 he says that the lord issues out his judgment each and every day man right and so today we kind of felt that shift in the atmosphere at least i know i did as soon as I heard that Biden became president, I felt that shift in the atmosphere, bro. Because listen, this is not about to be a smooth transition, right, into into Israel coming to power. Yeah, how was y'all liking this? Yeah, how was y'all liking this as a woman giving birth? When a woman gives birth, man, it is an ugly process. It is an ugly thing, and it's painful. It's about to be painful to give birth of a nation, birth of Israel, birth of Yahshua, man. Right? We gotta go. We gotta go through hell. You got some Israelite groups claiming out here that that uh, that Jacob's trouble is gay, right? Yeah, man. They said Jacob's trouble is gay, right? So, so, and they're about to embark upon a season that, that God said in, in Daniel chapter twelve, verse one, right? He said Daniel chapter twelve, verse one. This is a uh, this is the time of uh, Michael the archangel himself has to stand up for the people of his children, man, because this is the time that never has been since before. What I have you hope? God. God. And knowledge to them that know understanding. Uh -huh. And knowledge to them that know understanding. Right? Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 3 from the top. To everything there is a season. To everything. Go up to the blue line and uh, pull up that word season for you. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. To under under the uh, there's a purpose and time of things that's under the heaven. Now what's under the heaven? The children of men that he set up. To, to rule in kingdoms and to also be subservient unto kingdoms, right? And uh, give me First Thessalonians 5. This is the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5 from the top. But of the times and the seasons, but of the time and the seasons, listen, this Bible is nothing but, it is it's nothing but a, a time clock, man. It is it, because he declared the end from the beginning, right? Isaiah 46 and 10, right? So he is already, man, uh, he's already giving you this calendar to go by, which is the Bible. This is a measurable tool, right? And we're going to get that in 2nd Edges 9, right? Go ahead. Brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now you should know perfectly by now that the Lord himself is going to come like a thief in the night. Right? But a lot of our people don't understand because they don't understand the, the times and the season. Now let's go into that word season. Uh, uh, slow. Season. Uh, H2, Strong's H2166. Zaman. A set time. Time. Season. A set time. Meaning, an appointed time. Now, give me Daniel 5 and 25. Uh, oh, etymology yeah, yeah. going back again. A set time, appointed time. A set time and appointed time. Now, give me Daniel 5 and 25. All right. Look at Daniel chapter 5 and verse 25. And this is the writing that was written. Me, 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 me. Tikel. Oh. Like, Ufar sin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Now, this is the interpretation of what meaning mean to take what you force it means, right? And he, he Daniel gave this great prophecy unto the king of Babylon, right? And so we understand that we're living in the spiritual land of Babylon and Sodom and Egypt, right? Go ahead. Mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom. God hath numbered thy kingdoms. Now give me second Edward chapter nine. This is dealing with measurement of time, right? Because each nation has an, uh, well, not each nation, but uh, each kingdom that God has uh, allowed to rule, he has given them a certain amount of time to rule. And they can't go past it, and they also can't uh, uh, be this, uh, it can't be disrupted prematurely. Now, give me 2nd Ezra chapter 4. Hold that. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 4. And I want to say it's like 37. Yep, that's it. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter uh, four, verse thirty-seven. Uh -huh. By measure, had the by measure. You see how God is all about measurement, man. Measurement. You can look up in the skies and just see how how beautiful of a mathematician he is, man. He has the the uh, the constellations Orion, man. You see what I'm saying? Like everything is just measured perfectly, man. Right? Including these prophecies. These prophecies allow you to measure the times diligently. 
diligently within themselves. So you can know how long a particular kingdom is going to last all the way down to the month, man. Right? Go ahead. By measure has he measured the times, uh -huh. and by number has he numbered the times. And he do it not move, nor and he do not what? And he do it not move, nor stir them. And he do not move nor stir them. So when he already predestined before the foundation of the world was created, how long the miracle is going to last? Listen, he said, I'm not even going to move nor stir this time that they're going to rule prematurely. Right? So everything is already set, man. The stage is set. And you simple Negroes think that y'all actually did something. Give me Jeremiah chapter 50 in the NLT, starting at verse 44. Right? Because y'all think that y'all just actually appointed this leader. Right? But the Most High God appointed this leader. He appointed your new Pharaoh over in Babylon in spiritual Egypt to rule over you and to lead you into Jacob's trouble. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 50 in the NLT. Uh, Daniel 5 verse 26. This is the interpretation of the thing, Mene. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. So that's why, uh, 50 and, uh, Jeremiah. Okay, uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, go down with that. Yeah, that's it. All right, so yeah, he says, so he has numbered Babylon's days and finished it. Babylon, that's why I say, that's why I can say with confidence and boldness that America, you are finished, man. Right? That's, that's why I can say, that's, that's why the prophets can say out here, man, that America is finished because God already ordained it and, uh, and predestinated a certain amount of time for America rule. So it, it's finished already. Now we're just waiting for the manifestations, right, to, to come to pass, right? Have you got that? This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 44 uh -huh. in the NLT. I will come like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan. Now, who is this? This is nonetheless, but the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? In Revelation chapter 5. So this is Yahweh shot, right? Go ahead. Leaping on the sheep in the pasture, I will chase Babylon from its land. Uh -huh. So he's talking about America, spiritual Babylon, mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And I will appoint the leader. Oh, oh, read that slow. I will what? And I will appoint the leader. I will appoint the leaders. You simple Negroes didn't appoint no leader. Yahweh just said that I will appoint the leaders. Give me Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. Right? Proverbs 21, verse 1. The Most High God has appointed all these leaders from the beginnings of the foundation of the world, man. Right? So you just go into the voting booth. You just did yourself. It was just vain, man. Because guess what? Whoever he wanted in there, they're going to be in there. Regardless, man. You got that? The Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh. Now he's talking about the mind, right? So so the most high God, well, he's about to explain it. Go ahead. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. He turneth it wheresoever he will. So he, he takes this leader's that mind that he appointed into uh, to spiritual Babylon, and he literally makes he forms his mind exactly to to fit his purpose and his will that's why you got joe biden saying is there any kind of way we can issue out a, a microscopic chip in these hands man this is prophecy man and y'all have no clue what the hell is going on y'all over here trying to prosper in this damn kingdom that's finished man y'all are simple right go ahead yeah, keep going. Right? It's going to come like, give me Ecclesiastes 9 and 12. It's going to come like a snare on you simple Negroes, man. It's going to come like a snare on you simple Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans that is not paying attention, man. That's why he says two-thirds of his people got to be put to death, man. Why? Because they are ignorant of his time, man. He already told you he's going to come like a thief in the night. You got that? The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 12. For man also knoweth not his time. Man knoweth not his time. So you, it's already bad enough that you don't know your Howard Shouts time. You don't know the time of Esau's rule and reign. But damn, you also don't even know your own time, man. Go ahead. As the fishes that are taken in the in an evil net. And, he, and it's sad that he's likening you to some damn beast because you have no knowledge. You have no understanding. He says, you don't even know your own time like some damn beast, like some damn fish, man. That's taken in an evil net. And guess what? Esau has you in an evil net, man. 
Imagine a cat's net thrown out into the ocean, right? You're just some little fish just, just gazing around looking for some damn plankton to eat on. And nonetheless, you got this big ass net about to drop upon you. You see that? And once that net drops upon you and lifts up, boom, there goes your jake of trouble right there, man. You see that? Then Esau, he has power from the Most High God to do whatever he wants to do with you. Because Esau is a servant of God. He is. That sounds weird to a lot of people, but Esau is a servant to the Most High God. Right? God. Because, and the reason why I say that is because Esau, what does he have? He has that, that blessing of the sword. And why did God give him that blessing? To issue out judgments unto you simple Negroes, man. He has been the chastisement. He has been the rod of God's chastisement on y'all for the past half millennium, man. Right? Go ahead. And as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time. So are the sons of men snared, meaning you're caught, you're trapped in an evil time. You go into that word evil, that's a compound word. E meaning time and build means bad. So you're caught in a bad time. This is Jacob's trouble. See that? Go ahead. When it falls suddenly upon them. It falls suddenly upon them. It's going to get you like a thief in the night. Give me Luke 21. Go to verse 34. Right? And this is how Yahweh shot. He loves his element of surprise, man. He loves the element of surprise. You see? And it's mercy, man. It's mercy that we have woken up to this truth and got this warning, bro. Because as, as uh, like, like we was talking about earlier in the sit-down lesson, man, this is literally equivalent to a, a, a big black jake, you know what I'm saying? He has a plot of terror, you know, to shoot up a place, but he's warning you ahead of time, hey, get up out of here, I'm about to shoot up this place. That's exactly what this is, bro. And that's what it is in the form of these prophecies, right? In the form of these prophecies, he's telling you, get up out of here. Give me Mark 13 and 23 in the NLT, right? That's exactly what it is, right? Amen. Go ahead. He's going to be riding through a storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fit that go and shoot up back up. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, how much shot, bro? He was Thanos, man. Like, brother, y'all was was explaining that movie to me, man. I was like, hey, bro. Infinity War. Infinity War. Come on, come Yeah, bring it out real quick. The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. Uh -huh. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Alright. The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 34. And take heed to yourself. Take heed. What does that mean? That means to pay attention. Pay attention to what? Yourself, get your house in order, and pay attention. Pay attention to these prophecies, man. Because these prophecies, they do not lie. Alright, go ahead. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Lest your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. You go into that word surfeiting, that means getting this of the mind through drunkenness of excess wine. Right? And you got a, a bunch of damn jakes out here uh, at Stop 6, uh, right down here on Elm Street, right here on, this, on, on, uh, on Main Street, man. They're drunk. Not knowing that this evil net is, is encircling them. Right? Go ahead. And drunkenness and cares of this life. And cares of this life trying to have prosperous in this kingdom, man. You're caring about trying to try to build up a damn 401k. You're trying to still stack up bread in a damn savings account. You see what I'm saying? When any morning you can wake up and your bank can tell you, listen, your money is nothing. The economy has just collapsed, man. And get ready for that because this is coming. We are prophets of doom. And we're commanded to prophesy doom. Why? Give me Ezekiel. Hold that. Give me Ezekiel 7. Well, he's holding a lot. Give me Ezekiel 7, starting at verse 5. We're going to finish. We're going to come back. Yeah, Ezekiel 7 and 5, right? And it is, it's, we, listen, we are not some, some false prophets, right? Because how do we know we're not false prophets? Because people hate us. We don't give them a word that they want to hear, man. You see what I'm saying? Like these guys right here. I'm not going to worry about y'all because y'all got something for you coming. Something coming for you. You don't even know it. Go ahead. The book of Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 5. Thus said Yahweh power. Thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. And evil and only evil behold is come. An evil and only evil is to come, man. We're not trying to over here trying to tickle your fancy by giving you smooth words. We're going to come straight out this book, man, and tell you it's evil and nothing but evil coming. But y'all over here, just like in the days of Sodom, just like in the days of, uh, uh, of the flood, man, y'all over here just living life like ain't nothing going on. These people going to some damn concerts, going to go get fooled, right? 
but evil and only evil is coming. But yet y'all claim to believe in the Lord and believe in this book. But y'all just take a couple of songs and a couple of progress and try to encourage yourself. But he's over here. Man, listen, this is the bloodiest book of all time. He tells you from the get-go he's a man of war. What do men of war do? They kill. Right? This is the bloody book. Read that again. Time. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 5. Thus says Yahweh power, and evil and only evil will hold is come. And it's like, an end is come. An uh, end is come. I'm over here telling you that this is the end of the so-called white man's reign in this world. Because guess who's next? Israel, the so-called black Hispanic and Native Americans. You're looking at your future kings right here on this corner. Go ahead. The end is come. It watches for thee. It's watching for your black ass, man. And it's about to take you by surprise. The most high God is plotting against you. Give me Jeremiah chapter uh, uh, 30, last verse. Go ahead. Behold, it is come. Behold, it is already come. So all we're doing is just prophesying the doom, man. Now give me verse 17. Verse 17. All hands shall be feeble. All hands shall be feeble, man. All hands shall be feeble if you don't have the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah resting upon you, giving you uh, wisdom and knowledge to be the stability of your times, then, man. Go ahead. And all knees shall be weak as, and shall be weak as water. All knees shall be weak as water, man. Water is unstable. Right? Water is unstable. And so that's exactly how y'all's knees are going to be like when you look at Yahweh Shah, man. Y'all going to, hey, listen, y'all have no idea. Listen, I love to bring out this message of doom because too long we've been lied to uh, with, some, with some, uh, some sweet words, man. Too long, bro. So now it's time for you to hear the real uncut uh, and raw truth from this book. Give me Ezekiel 2, last, second last verse. I'll wait down to the last verse. Book of Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, uh -huh. and lo, a roll of a book was there. A roll of a book was there. And what is that? That's none other than the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. That's his book. Go ahead. And he spread it before me. And he spread it before him. And it was written within and without. It was written inside and outside. Go ahead. And there was written therein uh -huh. lamentation. Lamentation. And morning, and morning, and woe, and woe. That's death, destruction, and sorrow, and bitterness, man. That's what this book is, within and without. That's what this book is, man. This is not a book of encouragement. Now, this, we can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but first we got to go through all hell, man. Right? He's about to do something new that's about to bug a lot of uh, Israelites that's not taking attention. He's about to bug y'all out. Listen, there's prophecies within this book. We can't even explain that's going to happen, man. There's going to be some things that we're going to see with our eyes, man, and we're not going to be able to explain it. Which Messiah, I believe, chapter 12 or verse uh, or chapter 7, no matter where, it's some, one of those chapters. He said there's about to be some works, man. Listen, we can't explain, bro. Give me, uh, give me Ezekiel uh, chapter 8. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But listen, he's about to do some, some things, man, we just can't explain. It's going to bug a lot of y'all out. What the have you hope? Come on, bring that up. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 24. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath done it, and until he hath performed the intents of his heart. So so, so the fierce anger of the Most High God is about to be issued out into this world, and it's not going to come back unto him until they have performed their duties. Listen, he's got evil spirits on reserve, man. Those same evil spirits that swept that land of Egypt, guess what? It's coming back down to spiritual even today, man. Y'all better get ready for it. But we understand that you're not going to take, uh, you're not going to uh, uh, listen to the to the words of a poor man, right? And that's how that's the that's the beautiful essence, and, and, and uh, uh, that's the beautiful way how the Most High God works. He used the base things of the world, man, to to carry out his issue, to carry out his his will, man to confound the wise, the people that's so haughty, the people that's so proud, the people who don't want to listen to, to people who look rejected and, and, and despised, man. Right? But like Ezekiel, give me Ezekiel 33 and 33, real quick. Real quick. Right? Book of Ezekiel, chapter 33 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. And when the, and when this coming to pass, so when these things that we're talking about up here comes to pass, go ahead. Lo, it will come. Lo, it will come. Then shall they know 
that a prophet has been among them. Then you will know that a prophet has been among them. But guess what? It's going to be too late then, man. It's going to be too late. You're going to be looking up. <laughs> you're going to be looking up, man. You're going to be seeing those oxybian missiles coming down. And you're going to say, gosh, no, they did tell me. But boom, it's going to be too late, man. Go ahead. In the latter days, you shall consider it. In the latter days, you shall consider it. Right? And we understand that these are the latter days. It was, it was the beginning to be the end of the world when you have a shot uh, came on the scene, man. Now, go into your blue letter and go into that word consider for me in the Hebrew. Right? Because we're doing something exactly what this word said we would do. We're going to come back into our nationality. We're going to know who we are. We're going to know who our enemy is. And then we're going to teach it, man. Like Ecclesiastes 3 says, he says there's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. This is definitely the season to be speaking right now. This is the season to be preaching and teaching right now. While we still can. Because give me Ezekiel. I'm glad you said that. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3. Chapter 3. Verse uh, 26. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 26. And it will come. So look. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. So here the Most High God is telling one of the most powerful prophets. He says, listen, I'm about to make your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. Why? That thou shalt be dumb uh -huh. and shalt not be to them. Meaning he's going to be quiet then, right? Ezekiel is far from a dumb man because this man has wisdom. Go ahead. That thou shalt not be unto them a reprover, uh -huh. for they are a rebellious house. Yeah, so there's going to be a season, man. From where the words of the Most High God, or the words of Yahweh Bashem Al Shah, is going to be shut up, man, in the mouth of these prophets. And they're, we are no longer going to be coming out here. One reason about, is because they're going to have the city on lockdown. Another reason why is because, listen, he's, listen, let who is just be just still, and let who is unjust be unjust. Every man has to give an account until his works, man. Right? Go ahead. And so, so this is the. Yeah, so going back to Jeremiah chapter uh, 30, the last verse, I believe it was verse 24, he says, in the latter days you, you shall consider it, meaning in the latter days you're going to do what? It says, uh, section E, Palel, to teach, to what? To teach. So in the latter days, we're going to teach it, man. Teaching what? Teaching that his fierce uh, anger is going to come up on the earth and it's not going to return to him until he has accomplished everything that he has issued out. Give me Sirach chapter uh, 39, verse 16. Is he seating the whole thing? Give me a uh, 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 Ecclesiastes eight and four. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter eight and verse four, where the word of a king is. Where the word of a king is. Where do you find this word of the king? Right, right here in your holy Bible. Go ahead. It's power. It is power, man. It's, these are listen. These words are power. Right? But guess what? He's hid it to the masses because he doesn't care about most of the people, man. Listen, a lot of y'all were just born in vain. Give me a, uh, give me second Ezra 9 and 22. Right? Who may say to him, what doest thou? So who may say unto him, what are you doing? Right? <laughs> Whether you get down to this program or not, you can question it all you want. You can say, what are you doing? Listen. He's going to do it anyway. There's power in these words. There's power in these prophecies, man. So in the latter days, like he said in Jeremiah, we're going to be teaching these things, man. This is the time and the season to speak. Go ahead. Uh, it's all right. Uh, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, and verse 22. Let the multitude perish then. Let the multitude perish then, Go ahead. which was born in vain. Which was born in vain, man. And I can tell just by looking on the streets of Dallas that a lot of y'all were born in vain because y'all are some sheep. They tell you to put a goddamn mask on and you put a mask on. And most High God tells you to keep his commandments and live and you don't do them. So you were born in vain. You were born for the sword, man. Go ahead. And let my great be kept. And let my great be kept. Meaning the elect men of Israel. Go ahead. 
and my plant. Uh -huh. For with great labor have I made it perfect. With great labor has he made it perfect. Listen, he deals with us like sons. Every time we went off, he whoops our ass, man. So this is great labor. Each and every day, man, he is forming us to his will to be conformed into the image of his son, man. That's labor. And he didn't have to do it. So you better thank God for predestination, man. Because a lot of people are born in vain. So if the spirit bears witness to this, listen, we have a lot of work to do. But it should be your good pleasure to build up your father's kingdom, man. If you don't want to do it, to death with you, man. Right? Because we're, listen, we don't understand the magnitude. We don't understand the depth and the power of being in this truth. If you treat this truth lightly, the most high God is going to treat you lightly, man. Right? Give me second chapter 15, verse 2. Yeah, let's finish that. So, Rick, 39 and 16, all the works of Yahweh are exceeding good, and whatsoever he commanded shall be accomplished in due season. And whatsoever he commanded, it shall be accomplished in due season. Season, once again, season's going back in two times. See, a lot of people fell out the truth because they they uh, they got bugged out because they were thinking, oh, man, why would he send us into slavery? Well, you don't understand, man. He already said in, uh, there's a particular time and a season when Israel's going to be uh, uh, taken into captivity, be plucked up off their land. Right? You see that? As a matter of fact, with that being said, go back to Ecclesiastes 3. All right? This is the book of uh, Second Chronicles, chapter 15, and verse 2. And he went out to beat Asa and said unto him, Hear ye, uh, hear ye me, Asa, and all of Ju and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Go ahead. While ye be out with him, and if ye seek him, he will be found with you. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. Go ahead. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. But if you forsake, if you forsake him, he's going to forsake you. This is just, man. Listen, if you, if you search for me, I'm a, I'm, you're going to find me. Give me uh, Jeremiah 23 and 19, 29 and 13. Right? If you search for me with your whole heart, you shall find me. If you don't look for me, you can, listen, you're going to be destroyed. Give me Proverbs 13, 13. Hold that real quick. Because this is the message that, that needs to be coming out, man, out of every camp right now, man. This is the this is prophecy, man. He says uh, in, in Revelation 19 and 10 that, uh, that, that, that the, the saints, they're going to have the spirit of prophecy upon them, man. The spirit of prophecy. Go ahead. The Proverbs of the 13, verse 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. Clear, cut, drop, precise to the point, man. If you despise his word, you're simply going to be destroyed. There's no gray area with you. How about Shem Yahweh Shah, man? Go ahead. But he that feared the commandment shall be rewarded. But he that feared the commandment shall be rewarded. And we, we fear the commandment of our great king, man. So, Lord willing, he's going to reward us if it's his good pleasure, man. Right? Because in Luke chapter 12, he says, Fear ye not, little flock. It is your good, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, man. That's a beautiful thing. But we gotta work for this thing, man. We gotta work for it. How you expect to go into a kingdom that you even built, man? We're building it spiritually right now. Right? Now the heathens, they're gonna actually build it physically. <laughs> they're gonna build it physically, but right now we're putting our bricks in spiritually, man. This is this is a strong and mighty task that the most high God is appointing us to do, man. So we shouldn't treat, we shouldn't come into this truth with some type of festive spirit, thinking that this is like uh, some 1960s fad, man. No, this is the truth. This is the truth. This is not where you just put on some damn not cheeky, you know what I'm saying, and treat it light, bro. This is the truth. <laughs> this is like I told y'all. This is king shit, man. This is where you ask your father of the heathen, he's gonna give it to you. This is where you get to, uh, you know what I'm saying? carry out righteousness man this is you you are the judges of the earth and you're doing it in righteousness man right because this world they have forgotten what righteous judgments and, uh, and acts look like because far too long it's just been a land of darkness give me job chapter 10 and 22. i know i'm going all over the place but man the spirit just kind of you know what i'm saying the book Job chapter 9 and verse 22. It's a lot. 10 verse 22. A land of darkness. A land of darkness. That's what America is. Because everything that they do, they do it in darkness, including their councils, man. You got those wicked elite, man. 
and elite women, you know what I'm saying, like Hillary Clinton and, and your new president, Biden, they do a lot of councils in darkness, man. There's no, there ain't no telling what happened on Epstein Island, man. Those things were done in darkness. But like Luke 12 and 2 says, what does it say? Uh, Luke 12, uh, 12 and 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, man. Because in Sirach, it says that the Lord's eyes are ten times thousand brighter than the sun. Go ahead. Neither hid that shall not be known. Uh, neither hid that shall not be known. So these wicked counsels that these elites are holding, the most high God is about to expose their ass, man. Go ahead. A land of darkness, uh -huh. as darkness itself, uh -huh. and of a shadow of death without any... Y'all are missing. You Jakes, you know what I'm saying, who's living too comfortable up in the United States of America right now, y'all about to literally see that this is that land of this valley of shadow of darkness, man. Right? You're about to see bodies stacked upon bodies. Give me Jeremiah, chapter 17, I'm going to say verse 2. Look at that. You're about to see bodies on bodies, man. Get used to it. Get used to smelling the stench in this in these cities, man. The stench of, of, of well, now your, your trash, man, they're not going to be working. They're going to be laid off. So the sanitary system is going to be done. The sewers are going to be, you know what I'm saying, backed up. You got shit coming out of at these sewer drains, not including the dead bodies of, of the of the animals and your relatives. These are all plans of your Howard Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. And we're coming out here to issue out these judgments and these prophets unto you, man. So it don't, so this day don't catch you unawares. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Six days. Uh, 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 yeah, that's it. Uh, book of uh, Jeremiah uh, 16 and verse 4. Or 2? 4. They shall die of grievous death. They shall what? Die of grievous death. I'm going to die of grievous deaths, man. If you take that chip, you're going to have some damn boils come out of you, man. You can't be cured of it. And you also can't repent. Go ahead. They shall not be la uh, lamented. Nobody's going to cry for your black ass, man. Right? Your uh, 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 cousin Pooka ain't going to hold that funeral before you. Because he probably done got murdered. Buy your house shop. Go ahead. Neither shall they be buried. But they shall be a, be as dung upon the face of the earth. You know what dung is? It's just simply shit. So you're going to be simply shit upon the face of the earth, dead. You're going to be a carcass. Why? Because you don't want to take heed to the words, man. That's how powerful this book is. I told you this is the bloodiest book. Well, the Most High God told you this is the bloodiest book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time you pick up this book, you need to pick it up with reverence and fear, man. Every time you pray, you need to pray. You need to get yourself ready before you pray. Listen, man, this is the king of kings we're dealing with, bro. That's right. We're about to enter into a, a new kingdom, bro. We are in the shift of a new dispensation of time. It is not about to be an easy or smooth transition. There's about to be a lot of death, man. So we out here to come and tell you about these terrors that the Most High God has plotted and prophesied to you, man. Go ahead. And they shall be consumed by the sword. And they're going to be consumed by that sword. Whether it be a physical sword or or, uh, or a biological sword, such as that vaccine, man. Because the most high, who's giving it out? Esau. This is his gift. The gift of the sword. What's the sword do? It destroys. So that vaccine is going to destroy you. And of course, the mark of the beast is going to destroy you. Right? Is that it on that? And by famine. And by famine. Famine is one of the worst ways to die. And that is coming up very soon. Very soon. Right? People are already raiding the stores, man. Raiding in of ammo and raiding about some damn toilet tissue once again. You know, what's toilet tissue going to do? You ain't going to eat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, bro. Listen, y'all about to be, listen, this is the time that that has never been up under the whole heaven. Right? This is a, this is a, a fearful time, man. He said, he told you all needs are going to be as water in those days. You see? But see, we're going to have strength and stability and wisdom because we, we've been doing the work of the Most High God. And Lord, Lord willing, he keeps us in this truth. Because any day, man, you can be a castaway. Even Paul had to say, uh, uh, lest I preach the gospel unto you, I myself may be a castaway. And that's after all the work he did. And none of us did half the work Paul did. And he himself still said, lest I be a castaway, man. So you better be humble when you come into this thing. Because the Most High don't need you. These little words that I'm speaking, well, it's not little because the Spirit's doing it through me, but this vessel that I'm in, I'm nothing, man. He can destroy me at any second, man. And the viewers that's watching this as well, man. Go ahead. What I have you hope? Yeah. Yeah. We just finished it off with Matthew 24 and 14, right? Because it's the main thing. 
the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14. And this gospel, this gospel, not the gospel that, that uh, Pastor T.D. Jackson gave you, but this gospel, Isaiah 61, and a part of that is the day of vengeance. This is the gospel that's, that's going to be what? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Uh -huh. Listen to this, my brother. Go ahead. In all the world, this gospel shall be preached to all the worlds. 